Welcome back friends. Welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And in this video lecture, I will be talking about genetic drift. Okay. Genetic drift is a term uh, that we mostly use for uh, population genetics in population ecology part. But what it is actually? Genetic drift is a phenomena which occurs while there is a change in the gene frequency or allele frequency in a population. You know, in a population, if we talk about specific genes and their frequency, we will also find the different variants of that gene, which are known as alleles, to be found in a specific percentage, right? You know, because there are different alleles, dominant alleles, recessive allele, they are present in a specific frequency in a population and we call those frequency allele frequency. Now, the allele frequency can be changed over time. So, during a po during time scale, if a allele frequency of a population is changed due to the effect of chance and randomness, that is known as genetic drift. Now the idea is, according to the Hardy-Weinberg principle, the allele frequency of a population should remain constant if there is no other evolutionary influences of different kinds. What are the example of such evolutionary influences? that uh, that no immigration no immigration no mutation okay the population size should be bigger now in those cases this this genetic drift occurs when the population size when the population size was small so for small populations the allele frequency varies over time and at those conditions, they are not following the Hardy-Weinberg law, okay? Because the size is small of the population. So, if you look at the genetic drift, what is the exact idea that we can find? You know, this complete phenomena of changing the allele frequency of a population is due to chance, okay? So, this complete thing occurs due to chance or randomness, okay? So, let us let's say in a population, try to think of this phenomena as, a, as an example and in this case I will be drawing, let us say these are the complete population scale that we are seeing here and what we can see, let us say there are different proportions of the allele frequency that we are observing. So this is the first, the population at the very beginning of the genetic drift to occur the start point of the population. At the start point, we see, let us say here the red colored thing here is the dominant allele frequency. So, we designate with, cap, with P and this blue one is the recessive and we designate it with Q. So, the frequencies here are same, that is the red one is 5. So, and Q1 is also 5. So, so according to Hardy-Weinberg law, remember P plus Q equals 1. That will be constant throughout the population. Okay. In this case, so both of them are similar. So, P will be 0.5 and Q also will be 0 0.5. Okay. Now, let us say here, this is the population, but this population is very small because there are very few people living there for example, very few organisms living there. So, there is a high chance that randomness can take its effect. There is a high chance that somehow during the sampling process from one generation to the next generation, this allele frequency randomly change over time. And this randomness, let us say in this case, the randomness causes a sudden change in the allele frequency. And what we see here is and So, P becomes 0.3, Q becomes 0.7. Now, see the allele frequency is changing over time. Now, let us say after another round, the allele frequency changed to P become 0.2, Q becomes 0.8. Now, let us say after some more time, P becomes 0, Q becomes 
1.0 so let's look at it very clearly what you can see is that slowly you'll see that this the value this this frequency for the dominant rate is gone over the time in this case recessive trait might also go so it, it depends on the type of allele it might be anything but it's completely depending on chance that this value for p is considerably going down and ultimately goes to zero and the complete population now have a specific one single type of allele frequency only that is the allele for the recessive it's completely one q becomes zero this is known as genetic drift and this thing will take place only if a population size is small enough if the population size is bigger in that case this type of random process might not occur why because in a large population changing of allele frequency is not that easy to achieve but in small population changing in small amount can lead to the complete change in the population okay so that is the idea of the genetic drift in this case now there are two types of event are associated with genetic drift two types of genetic drift we can talk about one is known as the bottleneck effect other one is known as the founder effect now what are those things those are the example of genetic drift so let me write it here bottleneck effect bottleneck effect and founder effect so what is the idea of bottleneck effect and founder effect the idea of bottleneck effect is that when a population is squeezed through a bottleneck now what does that mean the idea is in this case genetic drift is taken place in a population as a result of genetic drift we lose a lot of variations in the allele lot of frequencies in the allele and then we have only small things or small changes little changes made in that population so what we mean just let's take an example and talk about that the bottleneck effect example is the population of uh, the northern californian seal the northern seal that we see the northern seals they live mostly in uh, the us the the coastal area through us and little bit area of the uh, mexico as well in in 1800s in 1890s what happens at the very early time we have like 100000 population uh, 100000 number of uh, species present some thousand number of seals present there in the population so it's a large population at the very beginning now there is there are some events like some some events lead to the destruction of the population of the seals and human are the causative agent for that they start to occupy the beaches and stuff as a result seals start to die and seals are start to killed by the human for different reasons so as a result of that in 19 in 1890s and after that time there is a time when the population of northern seals go down to 50 so just imagine from 100000 the population size gets down to 50 and that is the time we call it as a bottleneck because let's say here there are 100000 populations now they are pressed through a bottleneck of only 50 population size now after that event human becomes so much now uh, sensitive to those damages and thing and people start to think of the value of seals living so they start to again uh, reaccommodate seals there and try to captive breeding and then to to allow the seals to grow so as a result of that slowly human check their activities there and seals slowly start to grow again and now if you look there the seal population now again came back to almost like 150,000 or something like that so what is going on here is that this population if you look at the very early like 1800s or 1700s the population is huge at 1890s the population almost kind of squeezed through a bottleneck and now it's again coming back to the normal shape so this is known as a bottleneck effect now the idea is as they squeeze to a very low number of, of individuals in the population at that time point there are so many chance of genetic drifts going on there and as a result of those genetic drifts so many modifications and characteristics changes occur so now if you look at the population we have so many different 
features in that population compared to the population we saw earlier. So we have a small changes accumulated due to randomness and chance at the time of 1890s when there are, they have those uh, very small population size. That is one example and that is known as bottleneck effect. Other one is known as a founder effect. Founder effect means in this case, let's say there is a huge population. Now due to some event, some of the organism or individual from that population needs to move to some place else. Okay, it kind of happens to like uh, birds, it kind of also happens to human and all those things. For example, in, in, uh, in South Africa, the population is named Afrikaners and this Afrikaner population, that population is founded by few Dutch people. They went there in South Africa, start to colonize there. At the very beginning time, there are only 20 people go there and start the population and colonize there. Slowly, now there are thousands of people living there in the South Africa originated from the original 20 people founded population. Now that population when founded at the very early time with only 20 people, that's a very small population. A lot of changes have been constructed since then. So a lot of things, a lot of change in allele frequency. And at that time, though in those 20 people, many of them are infected, many of them are kind of having a disease known as Huntington's scoria, Huntington's disease. Now as they have Huntington's disease, in most of the people in that 20 founding population, throughout the year, the rate of Huntington's disease is very high in the South Africa. The percentage of Huntington's disease become very high. The reason for that is that the founding population, many of the people in the founding population already had that disease earlier. So that is known as a founder effect because at that early time, some of the alleles, in this case uh, the allele for the Huntington's disease, some of those alleles remain changed and their population is, uh, the, the frequency of those alleles are also getting changed. It might get increased over the time. So, so now individuals in, in, in the present times get those disease quite often in that particular population in the South Africa. So that is the idea of founder effect. And again what happens? Because you have a large population, you take some people out from that population, put it someplace else. And allow them to start a new population. This is also the genetic drift. So genetic drift kind of occurs every time your population is squeezed through a very low number of population size which is a bottleneck or if you put it uh, in some other area which is also like a small population at the start. So in both this case it will uh, affect uh, the allele frequency, it will change the allele frequency over the time. Now, if we want to think and see how these allele frequencies change over the time and how it looks like actually, how we get this idea, we need to talk about the graph that we can see. So let me show you the graphs. Now, how to plot them? We have a baseline. That baseline is going to tell us about uh, the, the values. Like it is the value for say 0.5 for all of them. 0.5 is the frequency of the allele. And if we take the allele frequency like, like say, let me take 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 1, and 0 0.4, say 0 0.3, 0 0.1, is 0 okay this is the scale that we can form and this is the middle point now let's say here both of these free alleles like p and q let me draw p with this red and q with the blue okay so what we can design here is that the value for p it's changing it start with this 0 0.5 okay that goes to 0 0.3 and it can it can go back or forth like that and flow can go 3 and then finally, uh, let's say here, finally it reaches to 0. Similarly, if we go for the value for the Q, it start with 0 0.5, reaches to 0 0.7, reaches to 0 0.8 and finally reaches to 0 0.1. So if you look at this graph, you can see how these frequencies of alleles are drifting apart from each other. That is the idea of genetic drift because the allele frequencies are drifting apart from each other. So this drifting value you can calculate at the very beginning there is a drifting percentage here. But now if you look at some years later or some time later, this is a time scale obviously. 
you see the drifting value is increasing over the time it is increasing because all this frequency for p and q started at 0.5 both of them started here but as we go on the frequency for p goes down frequency for q goes up so there the value will drift and slowly they are drifting apart that's what we call it genetic drift okay this in a sense is what genetic drift all about okay so it is very important to understand about how the population behave and why it is very important to maintain all the criteria and in evolving populations to achieve new features genetic drift is a hugely important thing because it allows to deliver the important raw materials that will be required for the evolution of the population because they receive new things they receive new features and and changes due to this randomness due to this uh, like uh, almost instantaneous things like spontaneous changes over there and that could affect if only the population size is small okay so that's all about genetic drift if you like this video please hit the like button subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that and share this video with your friends thank you very much for watching